Hey guys, today on the Cool Stuff Guys Like channel we're going to talk about stepper motor basics. Um, so if you have a project that you want to um, maybe drive with stepper motors, there's really four basic things you're going to need in order to make this thing turn the way you want it to. Um, the first of course is your motor. Um, next is a stepper driver. Um, so here's one right here. And you're going to need a power supply to drive the driver and of course some sort of means of generating the pulses that you need to make this thing turn. So starting with the motor, you're going to want to size your motor correctly. So there's really three basic stepper motor sizing conventions from a frame size perspective. So first is a NEMA 17 which is uh, really a little bit smaller than this. I believe that means 1.7 inches hole to hole. This here is a NEMA 23 and then the big ones are the uh, the NEMA 34 and those are the most common for any sort of home project. Uh, and within each of those frame sizes there's a range of available torques. So the 17s are going to be a lot weaker. They're, they're for like your little um, 3D printer projects. The 23s are going to be for your small benchtop milling machine applications and if you have a larger CNC you might want to step up to a 34. Um, these particular motors, uh, this one here is a 260 inch ounce which means uh, the holding torque on it if you were to put a, a one inch lever on here would be 260 ounces. Um, on this this bad boy we've got uh, 570 inch ounces which is about as big as you're going to get for a NEMA 23 frame size. Um, they're really still bud pretty budget friendly compared to like a servo motor but stepper motors of course are um, open loop so they don't get any feedback so if, if the stepper were to miss a step there's no way of the computer or the driver to um, know that happened and it can just kind of lose track of where it is. So for that reason when it comes to sizing I'd recommend sizing quite a bit higher than what you might think you need. Like these 570 inch ounce motors they they have they might have that much holding torque but if you look at the graph the torque curve um, it rapidly drops off so at any sort of RPMs you're going to be quite a bit under that actual torque and you really don't want to miss um, steps on a stepper motor. Um, next, so once you've kind of figured out what size motors you want, um, and these particular ones, these are bipolar four wire, which are probably the most common and pretty good all around for, um, you know, reasonably like holding, good holding torque, good to some extent as far as uh, medium RPM range. Uh, and all around just pretty good motors. Um, but once you get the, the figure out what motors you want to use, you're going to have to figure out what drivers to pair with that motor to get the most, most out of it. So uh, I, in this case, am using these uh, 2M542 drivers. They're pretty common. They're really inexpensive. And what these drivers will do is, um, they will send, they'll take the pulses that you're getting from your computer in this case and um, sequ sequence them in the right way for this uh, particular stepper motor and they will um, oh they'll step up the power so the little pulse is coming from the computer are only 5 volts um, so in this case I'm running these things at 40 volts um, which is going to be a lot more um, it's going to actually be able to turn this thing. So when you're picking your stepper driver, the one thing, couple things you might want to keep in mind. So this particular driver is a micro stepping driver, which means you know this stepper motor can make 200 pulses per rev, but I can actually divide those pulses. So I can run it at half step, and now it's 400 pulses. I can run it at quarter steps, it's 800 pulses. And when you start micro stepping, you really smooth out the operation of that motor. So a full step on one of these is going to provide nice torque, but it's going to be really have a lot of vibration. So if you're as long as you're running, um, if you're running things pretty slow, or you might be running things pretty slow, 
um, you're, you're going to want to definitely have the option to, to split those steps and consider like a half or a quarter step. The other thing is you want to make sure the available output current on this thing is something that cor correlates with the steppers you have. So these are 4.5 amp max current um, steppers and this driver um, at, at the max setting I can output um, 4.5 amps. There's a voltage um, for each of these drivers. This is a 50 volt driver. And what that means is um, that's the max you're gonna wanna run this thing at. You can run it anywhere from 24 to 50 volts, but the closer you get to that 50 number, the better torque you're gonna get at high RPMs because it's gonna be able to hit those steps and it's gonna be able to ramp up to that, that required 4.5 amps really, really quickly. Um, but that being said, you might not actually want to run it at 50 volts because these aren't these aren't like your gecko drivers that are basically bulletproof. Um, this thing says 50 volts. I don't necessarily trust that number to be um, super safe. So I run it. I run a 36 volt power supply, and I uh, it has a potentiometer on it, so I've turned it up to 40 volts. So it gives us a little bit of a safety factor. And uh, that brings me on to the next thing, which is your power supply. So, you know, in my box here, I've got my power supply. And I've got three, three axes on this milling machine. Um, so I've got a switching power supply. And it's got three outputs um, that can run to each of the three individual um, drivers. And the main thing with the, um, with the power supply is... Number one, make sure your voltage is within the range that you want to be in. And number two, make sure it, ha it has a um, high enough current rating to deliver the power you need if you have all three of these motors um, holding or spinning. So in this case, I've got um, like an 8.3 amp, 36 volt. And when I turn it up to 40 volts, it's going to drive that current down a little bit. But... For what I'm doing, it's it's really pretty good, and and to get much more than that, you're gonna go from really reasonable price range to pretty expensive. So for your little home projects, it's a it's a good uh, good setup. And then finally, the last thing is the pulse generator. So you have a couple options there, depending on what your project is. You might be able to use an Arduino if you're just making something spin and you wanna. Um, know where it's spinning or whatever, you're just going to repeat the same thing over and over. But this being a CNC machine, or in the event that you have um, a 3D printer, you're going to have a computer sending those pulses. And especially this being a CNC machine, it's going to send a lot of simultaneous pulses at pretty high speed. Um, so in order to pull that off, you really need a parallel port on your computer. And that's something that a lot of these newer computers and virtually no laptops actually have. So if you know somebody who has an old desktop that they could donate to you, that would be perfect for this. Or you can get these desktops for like 60 bucks nowadays that have a parallel port. And like this particular desktop, that's all it does is it runs the CMC. So it doesn't have to be crazy powerful or anything. Um, but the parallel port, so the output of the parallel port, you need to somehow split that apart and um, get it to your driver. So what I have here is a breakout board. So it takes all those pins from the, from the parallel port and splits them to these screw terminals that I can then send to all my stepper drivers. Um, that, that parallel port is a five axis. They're, they're like eight bucks. Um, and the reason I got the five axis is if something were to go wrong with some connector or something in that circuit, I could just cut that axis off and switch over to another one. The other thing you want to make sure your parallel port has is um, some other outputs and input terminals because you might want to consider running your spindle off of your CNC program um, and any like limit switches. You just want to make sure you have some extra terminals that you can dedicate to things like that. And really, those are the very most basics to kind of get you started. These steppers are great, inexpensive ways to control things like a CNC on a budget. And uh, 
they're really pretty simple, but just know that there are a few different things in like your basic DC motor that you need to know. So hopefully that helps you out on your project. Um, if you haven't yet subscribed to the Cool Stuff Guys Like channel, make sure you click the little subscribe button in the corner. And uh, if you want to receive notifications on any new videos, click on the little bell. Uh, thanks for watching.